When it comes to fighting bosses, Wendy is one of the best examples of risk and reward. If you are able to manage the risk of keeping Abigail alive, you are not only rewarded with damage that surpasses Wigfrid, but also a rapid fire AoE attack that's great for crowd control. For some bosses like Berger, the risk is just not worth the reward. However, against more difficult ones like Bee Queen, your success hinges entirely on keeping Abigail in the fight. In DST, Celestial Champion and the Ancient Fuel Weaver are both considered endgame bosses. Unlike Fuel Weaver, I can explain how to fight CC as Wendy in about 20 seconds. All you have to do is use a fully tamed ornery beefalo, preferably with a war saddle, and bring a stack of blue mushrooms for healing. In phases 1 and 2, keep Abigail under the effects of the Vigor Mortis Potion, and dodge him a little early. In phase 3, just give up on trying to keep her alive and fight CC without her. Do this while wearing the Bone Helm, or bring a lot of green caps to keep your sanity low, and as long as you know how to fight the Celestial Champion the normal way, you're going to do just fine. Fuel Weaver is a completely different story. If I tried to explain Wendy vs Fuel Weaver in 20 seconds, it would barely be of any help. That's because the Fuel Weaver fight is on a completely different level when it comes to difficulty. It's because of this that the Wendy vs Fuel Weaver fight is by far my most favorite matchup in the game. In this video, I'm going to do my best to explain the ins and outs of Wendy vs Fuel Weaver. Do not be discouraged if you're unable to pull this off immediately after watching my guide, because unlike many other fights in DST, the Fuel Weaver one is 50% knowledge and 50% execution. This video will give you the knowledge, but the technical skills required to actually put the knowledge into practice can only be developed by trial and error. Because of this, I highly recommend practicing this fight in a creative world, rather than learning how to fight Fuel Weaver in an actual game. With that said, let's finally get into the guide. First off, if you're going to be fighting Fuel Weaver as Wendy, you should be well versed in the general info about this boss, regarding how much HP he has, how hard he hits, and what he does. Catperson made a great video about this, so if you're new to the Fuel Weaver fight, please check that video out. So assuming that you know about Fuel Weaver, I don't have to waste my time explaining him and can dive right into what kind of gear you want to bring to the fight. My ideal gear would be at least 5 Thulocyte Crowns, a Magi, a Lazy Explorer, a Brightshade Sword, and a Nightmare Amulet. Brightshade Swords are only available well after beating Celestial Champion, so if you haven't beaten CC yet, a Thulocyte Club is pretty much just as good. If you're cheap like me, you can also use a Hambat. The only difference is that the Hambat will make the fight go on for longer, which means you have to use more of your other resources. Dark Swords and Glass Cutters are good too, however one of these isn't enough for the fight, and things like swapping to the second sword and placing the new one in the correct slot so that it doesn't mess with the hotkeys is just another thing you'll need to manage. Finally, the Morningstar is about as good as the Thulocyte Club or Brightshade Sword if the caves are wet. You want to use the Thulocyte Crowns for three reasons. First, they provide 90% armor. You don't want to use anything that provides less than 90%, since less armor means more damage, which in turn means you'll be wasting more time healing yourself from damage. Second, the crowns give you a shield every once in a while, which makes you immune to getting hit stunned, so the force field effectively increases your DPS. Finally, the crown takes up the head slot, which frees up your chest slot to be used by both the Magi and Nightmare Amulet. The Nightmare Amulet is important because you need it to destroy the hidden hands. However, it's also important because it allows you to bait the Fuel Weaver into using his mind control attack. The Magi is important because it increases your speed, and speed is something Wendy really needs in order to keep Abigail in the fight. Finally, we all know that the Lazy Explorer is there to teleport out of the Bone Snares. In addition to equipment, you're going to want good healing and sanity foods. I usually go with a few pierogies for burst healing, and a few jelly beans for sustained healing throughout the fight. You don't need jelly beans and you can get away with using pierogies, but as you'll see later, every second in this fight counts. So jelly beans mean you don't have to waste time chugging pierogies, and pierogies let you quickly get your HP up in case you are forced to tank. Since Wendy is good at fighting Bee Queen, I think having jelly beans for Fuel Weaver is very reasonable. However, if you don't, then you're going to want to bring at least 10 pierogi, since each jelly bean is worth 3 of them. You'll also need a strong sanity food. The typical thing people use is cooked cactus, but in my opinion, this is not ideal. Since you're playing as Wendy, you can mass murder Splamonkeys for cave bananas, which means banana shakes are a viable alternative. Banana shakes restore more than double the amount of sanity that things like cooked cactus or green caps do, which means you'll be spending less time chugging sanity food in order to not be insane. What I'm trying to say is that cactus is totally viable, but banana shakes are just way better, so make the shakes if you want to make things easier on yourself. We've covered armor, weapons, healing, and utility items. The next two items we will need are all about Abigail. The more important one is Spectral Cure All. It will heal Abigail an additional 20 HP per second over 30 seconds for a total of 600 HP. These are not only the things that will be keeping Abigail in the fight, but I also think they are a way to gauge your performance. When it comes to armor, healing, and weaponry, the amount of stuff that you use won't really fluctuate too much since Wendy is forced to tank Fuel Weaver. However, your performance heavily influences the amount of Spectral Cure-Alls that you end up using. In my mind, there are three different mentalities for applying these potions to Abigail, each one incurring different levels of risk. If you want to be the safest as possible, the mentality for applying potions to Abigail will be to ignore everything I say later in the guide and just keep her under Cure-Alls effects the entire time. 
This guide will be covering what I consider to be the most practical way of using the potions, which is basically after phase 1. Apply the potion to Abigail right after destroying the last hidden hand, or when her HP dips below 300. I will not be covering the most risky way to use potions, however I will leave a link to a demonstration of this in the description. The last item is Abigail's flower. If you're watching a Wendy Fuelweaver guide, I'm going to assume that you know how the flower works. If you don't, you should probably watch my video called How to Fight as Wendy. You won't be using it all that much in the fight, as long as you're doing things right. Now that we've covered the items we'll be using, let's talk about the setup. Probably the most important aspect of fighting with Abigail is positioning. Against B-Queen, you want to position yourself in relation to Abigail so that you're protected by AoE, B-Queen is in her AoE, and you're close enough to B-Queen so that she's attacking you. Against the twins, you want to position yourself opposite of Abigail so that the twins charge at you and away from her, which prevents her from getting devastated by their charges. Of all of Wendy's matchups, the Fuweaver one is where positioning matters the most. His Skull Bash is actually an AoE attack with a cone-shaped hitbox. The hitbox isn't huge like Deerclops's, but it's not something you can ignore either. When fighting Fuweaver, your number one goal isn't to avoid damage. It's not to deal damage as fast as possible. Hell, it's not even to prevent him from recovering HP from Woven Shadows. Just like all the other Wendy boss fights, your number one goal is to keep Abigail alive. While Abigail is summoned, she's not only dealing 40 damage per second and boosting Wendy's damage by 54%, but she's also destroying all the Woven Shadows that creep into her rather large AoE. If you lose Abigail, the fight becomes 100 times harder, so about 70% of your decision making in the fight will revolve around keeping her alive. A big part of doing this is positioning. You want to always position yourself so that you are not standing right next to Abigail. Doing this means Fuweaver's Skull Bashes will only hit you. If you don't do this, Abigail will get destroyed since each Skull Bash does like 200 damage to her and he attacks faster than Deerclops. So never stand next to Abigail while you're attacking the Fuweaver, because she'll die even if she's getting healed by Cure All. You also don't want to stand right next to Fuweaver. He has a huge insanity aura of minus 400 per minute. The aura's effects dissipate as you move away from him. You do not need to be right next to him in order for your attacks to land, so try to keep as much distance as you can when attacking him while he's vulnerable. Your Sandy will already be getting drained from the Tudosek Crown Force Fields, Woven Shadows, and Lazy Explorer Charges, so you don't want to unnecessarily waste time and Sandy food when you could just move your character a little back. When it comes to Abigail, you want to do the exact opposite. The AoE of her attacks are pretty big, However, she can get stuck on Fuweaver's shield, and when he's vulnerable, she can get stuck attacking him from quite a distance. This can allow tons of Woven Shadow to get to Fuweaver without getting hit by Abigail. To prevent this, you want to center Abigail on him. The best way to center her is to make sure she's passive, and attack Fuweaver from the opposite side of where Abigail is currently at. If you do this, she should both center herself onto him, and should be positioned to not get hit by his Skull Bashes. While you can prevent Abigail from getting hit by the Skull Bashes, you cannot prevent her from getting hit by Ground Smashes, since the AoE of this attack is a big circle. Each Ground Smash will do about 150 damage to Abigail. Luckily, he only does these attacks when he snares you, and during Phase 1 with his Bone Spiral. The thing is, you can prevent him entirely from doing the Bone Spiral in Phase 1, which drastically reduces the amount of damage Abigail takes. Fuweaver will try to snare you about once every 10 seconds. Spectral Cure All heals Abigail for 200 HP every 10 seconds, so the potion outheals the Bone Snare, meaning you don't have to worry about her while tanking Fuweaver if she's under the effects of the potion. Speaking of tanking, you have to tank Fuweaver in this fight. Most people do it anyways, because it's just a waste of time, lazy forager charges, and sanity to kite him and his snares, but with Abigail you have no choice. The way Fuweaver's AI works is that if you are within his attack range and you've hit him, he will focus on you. However, the moment you leave his attack range, if he is hit by Abigail, he'll immediately go for her. Since Abigail's attacks trigger instantly, he's basically going to instantly switch his aggro to Abigail once you kite his attacks, which is the last thing you want since he'll hit her for 200 damage every 3 seconds with his Skull Bash, which will end her really quick. The last thing I wanted to go over before we get into the actual fight are hotkeys. This is kind of a broader point that applies to all Fuweaver fights, but you should definitely place your most important items in the slots that are bound to hotkeys, so you can quickly equip what you need without searching throughout your inventory with a mouse. For me, I have inventory slots 1, 2, and 3 bound to my keyboard, so I can use or equip whatever is in those slots with the press of a button. I'm going to be rapidly eating sandy food throughout the fight, so my cooked cactus is in slot 1. I'm going to toggle the Nightmare Amulet on and off many times throughout the fight, so it's in my number 2 slot, while I start the fight with the Magi already equipped. I'm going to have to teleport around the arena and need all the speed I can get while Fever has a shield up, so I have the Lazy Explorer in slot 3. I also have my Spectral Cure All potions right next to Abigail's flower, which makes applying potions to Abigail really easy. Next to the Spectral Cure All, I have Jelly Beans and Pierogies, items that I will be using from time to time, but not nearly as much as the others mentioned. So that's the groundwork for what you should bring, and the general mentality that you should have. Now let's explain the ins and outs of the actual fight. Believe it or not, where you build the ancient skeleton really matters. 
First off, you can't even summon Fueweaver if the skeleton isn't built within the center circle, so it has to be inside. However, you want to build the skeleton as close to the outside as you can possibly get. The reason for this is that if you fight Fueweaver while inside the large circle, he'll use the Bone Spiral attack in addition to the Bone Snare. Like the Bone Snare, the Bone Spiral attack hits Abigail for almost 200 damage, because its AoE is a big circle. However, if both you and Abigail are standing on the outside of the circle, Fueweaver will not use his Bone Spiral. This results in Abigail taking way less damage during phase 1 of the fight. So build the skeleton on the very edge of the circle, and position you and Abigail so that you're not standing on the inside of the circle. It's okay if you're standing on the perimeter, just not on the inside. To finally position Abigail, keep her on passive and then walk her into place. After you've walked her into a good position, you have about 12 seconds until she starts wandering, so immediately start the fight. Do not wait, or else she might wander into the circle, which means she'll be eating bone spirals. It shouldn't have to be said, but since sanity is a huge factor in this fight, you should max out your sanity prior to engaging Fueweaver. The way I usually do this is by creating two dwarf stars right next to each other, which will provide you almost one sanity per second. Since I usually fight Fueweaver during winter, two stars never causes me to overheat. However, if you're pressed for time, there's no issue with summoning three or even four stars and eating a jelly bean to recover all the heat damage you'll take. If you do make a dwarf star sanity station, Make it in the corner because the stars take up space and can interfere with your lazy explorer teleports or targeting. Another way that I see people getting their sanity back up is by using the Bee Queen crown and standing near an obelisk. It's not something I usually do, but it seems really good so I thought it deserved being mentioned. With your sanity maxed out and Abigail in position, put the shadow atrium into the skeleton to start the fight. Doing this will immediately drop your sanity by 40. Because you have a couple of seconds in between activating Fueweaver and the fight starting, I would quickly eat 3 cactus to restore my sanity and a jelly bean to start regenerating HP. Every second of the fight is crucial. You want to take advantage of things you can do now, so you don't have to do them later. If you position Abigail correctly, you can just hold the attack button down and whittle away at Fueweaver's HP for most of phase 1. Contrary to popular belief, you do not need to apply a Spectral Cure All potion to Abigail at the start of the fight. Obviously the safest way to fight Fueweaver with her is to always keep her under the effects of Cure All, but this is absolutely not necessary. If you're new to the Fueweaver fight using Wendy, then maybe I would recommend always having the potion's effect on her. However, if you follow this guide and gain experience, you'll be able to beat Fueweaver just as quickly while only using potions when necessary. Every time Fueweaver hits Abigail with a snare, she'll lose about 150 HP. After he hits her with a third snare, her HP should be below 200. It's at this time that you apply the first Spectral Cure All to her. His attacks can interfere with applying the potion, so you need to apply it right after you get hit by an attack. After you apply the potion, he should be really close to entering phase 2. Once you see him enter phase 2 and generate the shield, immediately teleport away if you're snared, or run away if you're free, and chug a few cactus to restore your sanity. If you're not using jelly beans, you should also eat a pro gear or two at this time. This right here is probably the most important part of the run. Your goal right now is to destroy the Unseen Hands as quickly as possible. He'll probably summon Woven Shadows immediately after entering Phase 2. You want to be kind of on the other side of the arena when this happens, and set Abigail to aggressive about 5 seconds after he summons. Abigail will go around killing Woven Shadows while you destroy the Unseen Hands. Although it's better if he doesn't, it's okay if Fueweaver ends up eating a Woven Shadow or two during this phase. If he's bending down trying to eat, he'll ignore Abigail so it's a bittersweet way of keeping her from dying. If he's not preoccupied and trying to eat Woven Shadows, you can bait him into mind controlling you by equipping the Nightmare Amulet and unequipping it before it's too late. After you've destroyed the Unseen Hands, immediately start attacking Fueweaver and make sure that you're not standing next to Abigail. If Abigail is aggressive, there's a good chance that she's not centered on Fueweaver. So if she's not, set her to passive and move a little if she refuses to get to you. Even if Abigail is centered on Fueweaver, you're going to want to set her to passive before Fueweaver becomes invincible again. The animation for changing Abigail's state is kind of long, however you can use Fueweaver's attacks to cancel this animation, so you can get back to swinging. Depending on Abigail's health and how safe you want to play it, you can either apply another Spectral Cure All to her or not. If you want to play it safe, just apply another potion to her once Cure All's effects go away. If you want to live dangerously, don't apply a potion to her unless her HP dips below 300. Once he becomes invincible again, there most likely won't be any Woven Shadows left. If there are, they're really close to Abigail, so you can just stand where you were and tank a hit or two while she mops them up. If there's only one left, it's not the end of the world if Fueweaver eats it. Anyway, after the Woven Shadows are gone, teleport or run away from Fueweaver. You're now going to do three things. The first is destroy all but one of the hidden hands. The second is to chug a few cactus and one pierogi, two pierogies if you're not using jelly beans. The third is, once again, keep Abigail alive. Fueweaver will usually walk after you at a pretty quick pace, basically matching the movement speed of Abigail. He will largely ignore her unless she attacks him, 
and if you've done things right and set her to passive, the only time she's attacking him is if you're really close to her. Even if you're not close, few people will try to snare you about once every 10 seconds. Abigail will get hit by this attack if she's right next to Fewweaver, as is often the case since both are trying to walk to you. This isn't a huge deal if you're playing safe and always have a potion applied to her, but it could get dangerous if she's low on HP, or if the snare causes Fewweaver to catch up to you, because he'll probably end up hitting her with the Skull Bash. You can just try and run as far away from him as you can, but the arena isn't that large, so there are times where you'll get cornered, which can be really bad for Abigail. The way I prevent snares from hitting Abigail is by intentionally getting her to trigger the Fewweaver's shield. When Fewweaver's shield triggers, he'll flinch, which gives Abigail time to get away from him, which gets her out of the snare's AoE. If Abigail is stuck on Fewweaver, and you know another snare is coming up soon, you want to do a quick circle around both of them, and position yourself so you're close enough to Abigail to trigger the attack. When she does this, he'll flinch, giving you time to get away. If you want to be really cool, stay within about 5 tiles of Fewweaver after he flinches, because if he's ready for another bone snare, you can dodge it by running out of its range after he begins the animation. Another way to buy some time to eat or get Abigail away from Fewweaver is to bait his mind control with a Nightmare Amulet. The reason you want to destroy his hands so quickly at the start of phase 2 is because the quicker you destroy the hands, the more time you'll have to destroy the second set of hands before he summons Woven Shadows again. So once you destroy all but one of the hidden hands and restore your sanity, play a game of cat and mouse with him until he summons Woven Shadows again. If you are too slow in destroying the hidden hands, Fewweaver will summon when there are still plenty of hands remaining. If this happens, you're going to have to repeat what you did at the very start of phase 2, which is wait about 5 seconds after he summons, and set Abigail to aggressive while destroying the hands as fast as possible. You really don't want to be forced to do this, because not only does this take longer, but he'll probably end up healing a bit, possibly a lot if you're unlucky, and it puts Abigail at far greater risk of dying, since she'll be attacking him while you're not there to draw his aggro. So please make things easier on yourself and destroy all the hidden hands as soon as you can at the start of phase 2, and destroy all but one really quickly for the rest of the cycles. If you did things correctly, as soon as he starts to summon Woven Shadows, destroy the last hand to make Fuiver vulnerable again. Apply a potion to Abigail right before smacking the last hand. If you're trying to be really cool, only apply a potion to Abigail when her HP dips below 300. Position yourself so that you're attacking Fuiver while not next to Abigail, and position Abigail so that she's centered on him. From here on, you just hold the attack button down again, and wait as all the Woven Shadows get destroyed and Fuiver gets shredded. Once he becomes invincible again, you literally just repeat the same thing. Destroy all but one of the hidden hands, restore your sanity and HP, and keep Abigail alive. Remember to eat a jelly bean if the healing effect is worn off. With a fresh handbat, you'll be dealing around 3 to 4 thousand damage to Fuiver every cycle. Since Abigail prevents him from healing, Wendy can typically beat him in 3 to 4 rounds. And that is literally it. You repeat the cycle over and over and you'll win. If you've played it really safe and just kept Abigail healed at all times, you'll probably end up blowing through over 7 potions. If you followed my instructions for phase 1 and only applied potions to her right before hitting the last hand or when her HP is below 300, you'll use about 5 of them, maybe even 4 if you did a good job and are using weapons that are stronger than a handbat. If you decided to really push the fight to its limits and only use potions when Abigail's HP dips below 300, it's possible to beat Fuiver with just 2 potions if you're using a strong weapon or are animation cancelling. Fuiver is one of the final bosses of DST and probably the toughest one in the game, so to me, just being able to beat him with any amount of potions is an amazing feat. Like mentioned earlier, it takes both knowledge and the skill to execute on that knowledge. So do not get discouraged if you don't succeed on your first attempt, because I sure as hell didn't. At least now, you know what to do and how to do it. It's up to you if you want to develop the skills to make it a reality. Anyways, thanks for sticking with me to the end of this video. Like always, thanks for watching, take care and have a great day.